Oh, hey YouTube, how are you? Good news, I have a new bodybuilding video for you, so come check it out. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's the Tominator. Back again, picking up where I left off in my new series, The Best Poses of All Time. So last time we looked at the best front double bicep pose. This time we're going to be checking out the best front lat spread pose. So which guy throughout bodybuilding history hits this pose the best? Now once again, I'm not going to be ordering these in any particular order. Uh, there's just too many guys, too many pictures to go through. But at the end, I will be giving you my top overall pick for the best front lat spread pose ever. So stay tuned for that, and let's uh, get started. So first up, we have Andreas Munzer. This guy was really shocking to me at how well, like how good he looks in this pose, how well he fills it out. And he looks massive too, because Andre, you know, he's always been known for his conditioning. He's very famous for his shreddedness, probably the most ripped bodybuilder ever. But uh, I didn't expect him to be, you know, this good in this pose. I mean, look at the quad sweep too. Look at the V taper. This right here is almost like Dorian Yates level. You know what I'm saying? This is crazy. Like, biggest surprise to me of any guy on this list. But we got a lot to go through, so let's move on. Big Rammy. Now this guy's built like a brick house. He's an absolute monster. One of the biggest guys to ever compete. And he has a really outstanding V taper to go along with that. Because for a mass monster, he has a pretty streamlined waist relatively speaking, right? So, and he's just wide as hell through the shoulders, like Jay Cutler level width. And that's why I think he pretty much crushes Phil in this pose because he's just so much wider through the shoulders and the chest and that really helps him in a front lat spread comparison. Then we got Bob Chicarello. This guy continues to surprise. He surprised me in the last video when he looked as good as he did in the front double bicep and now he's surprising me again in the front lat spread. Because, I mean, look at the X-frame on the guy. Look at the quad sweep there. Look at the V taper. Just outstanding stuff, Bobby C. Good job again. We got Brian Buchanan, and you, you talk about a V taper. This is probably the best in history right here because I don't think I've ever seen a waistline that's as tight as this guy's. You know? And the aesthetics are just incredible on this man. Then we got another pretty aesthetic guy in Cedric McMillan. And this is one of his strongest poses, or stronger poses, I feel, because of his... Um, you know, he's got really good flaring lats. He's got a pretty good overall upper body, you know, with the delts and the chest, the arms. And for a bigger guy, you know, for a guy competing today, he's one of the more aesthetic guys going out there. So I always like to award aesthetics. Chris Cormier, um, one of the guys from the 90s that was, you know, just very consistent. Uh, like Sean Ray, very balanced, very proportionate, didn't really have weaknesses. And you can see it here. You know, really good through the chest, through the lats, the shoulders. Good legs, too. Very outstanding legs. And he looks pretty good in this pose, too, right? Here he is next to Ronnie Coleman and Flex Wheeler. And I believe this was the 1999 Mr. Olympia. Now, you know, of course I'm going to give this to Ronnie. But, um, you know, both Chris and Flex look pretty impressive here, too. And here's more Flex Wheeler. Now, this was never really Flex's pose, because as a narrower guy, he's not going to tend to excel in poses that are meant to accentuate width, like the front lat spread. But then again, he's got that tapered waistline, so that definitely helps him with the V taper. And, um, you know, his overall aesthetics and shape kind of propel him um, through, so that's why he made the list. But then again, we got Jay Cutler, and this is basically the opposite of what I just showed you, And because Jay's always had a blocky waist, a really wide waist, but... When you're as wide as a friggin' barn door, you don't need to have an extremely tapered waistline to have a really good V-taper like what Jay has. And, I mean, just look at the slabs and muscle, like in his delts and his pecs here, the legs. One of the best mass monsters ever. The, here he is in 2007, I believe, before he changed up his hair and figured out how to come in condition. <laughs> um, this would probably be, I don't know, 2011, 2012, 2010, somewhere in there. Look at the thighs, too. The more I, the more pictures I saw, I saw of Jay hitting this pose, the more impressed I was at how you know consistently good he looks. And we got Jean Pierre Fuchs. This is a, another mass monster from the '90s. Uh, I forgot about him in the first video. Not that he deserved to make that list. I just forgot to mention his name when I was talking about the top mass monsters from the '90s at one point. And uh, you can see the the wide flaring lats right here in this picture. And unfortunately, this guy had a really horrible accident when he was doing a photo shoot, squatting like almost 700 pounds and uh, his knees just gave out on him and he got crushed under the weight. That was an absolute cringeworthy sight and, you know, 
obviously had finished his career, unfortunately, but back in the day, he had a pretty impressive lat spread. This guy, John Turilli, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, he was a guy I'd never even heard of, but, you know, I came across this picture and it impressed me because, you know, he was competing back in the, you know, 80s, early 80s, I believe, maybe even late 70s. Um, this certainly looks like early 80s vintage right here, and he looks pretty impressive in this pose for that time period. But, you know, when we're talking about more recent guys, we got Dennis James. This guy always looked outstanding, and any anytime he wasn't on stage, basically. So if you saw any gym, like, workout videos of him, you might be thinking, like, here's the next Mr. Olympia. Like, how is this guy not going to push Ronnie with that kind of mass and, and freaky development? But then anytime he stepped foot on stage, it's like he lost 20 pounds of muscle. He just came in looking flat. He didn't really have very good definition. Nothing really popped out at you. So he could never really dial it in and find the formula, it seemed. That was his problem. But, you know, early in his career, I thought he had a really impressive V-taper and, and front lat spread. And I think that that's Dave Palumbo he's standing next to before Palumbo really acquired his uh, infamous Palumboism. Although it looks like he might be in the early stages of that because his waist is pretty blocky here. But nonetheless, this is about Dennis James. So the guy on the left looking pretty good in this pose. We got another Dennis, Dennis Tinarino. I featured him in the last video as well and he's looking pretty good in the front lat spread here. We have Ernie Taylor, and this guy really shocked me too, along with Andre Munzer, probably the biggest surprise for me, personally, because I didn't think he'd look this good in the front lat spread. He was always noted for like the synthol he would inject into his triceps, and you can kind of see it in this pose even, especially that, that arm on the right, I guess his left arm. You can see the bulge there, and that's very unusual, to say the least, to notice a triceps standing out like that in a front lat spread. Uh, he always denied doing those injections, but it was pretty obvious, especially later in his career, because <laughs> you just, you don't get peaks in your triceps, no matter what kind of exercises you're doing, you know, no matter your genetics, triceps don't have peaks in them, okay? But we have Evan Santapani, kind of a two-for-one picture here, and um, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Jay Cutler in this pose, because he's got, you know, that really wide lats, um, broad through the shoulders, pretty good delts, right? Um, Chest is a little flat, too, just like Jay's. Um, and, you know, not the best conditioning from the front, you know, or overall, but just a big, solid competitor, right? So I don't know if you guys see that, but he reminds me a little bit of Jay. We got uh, Joshua Lunarkowitz. This is one of the most recent guys to come out of the bodybuilding scene. So he just debuted in the Olympia in 2016, and everyone was praising him for his really outstanding conditioning, but he also looks outstanding in the front lat spread pose. And, you know, a lot of people are, not a lot, but I have heard people say that he's the best bodybuilder to ever come out of Australia, and I think that's completely insulting to Lee Priest. I mean, come on. This guy's better than Lee? Well, just hold your tongues on that one, because we'll see you later. Justin Compton. Uh, I had to include him here because of his shape and structure. I really like, you know, the outline of his physique here, the, his V-taper, his lines. But I really don't like his midsection. I don't know what's going on with that. What's going on with that? It looks like someone took an eraser and just smudged out his abs. So even when you're not flexing the abs, you should still see more definition than this. So I don't know. He's got to fix that. But love his shape, though. So that's why he's included here. Kai Green. Now, of course, Kai's going to make the list, right? He's got one of the best backs in the business today. Some of the best lat development ever. Really good legs, too. And he's, he's really wide. So he's going to dominate in this pose. And it has been his probably his most dominant pose, along with the... Uh, along with the back, uh, the rear double bicep. And every time he kind of steps foot, you know, on stage next to Phil, I feel like he destroys him in this pose. Because look at the wide flaring lats. Look how wide and broad he is across the shoulders, the legs. He even measures up well against King Ron. You know, I, probably Ronnie's still beating him in this comparison here, this fictional comparison, but, I mean, it's close. It's not by a huge margin that he's beating him, so... That really speaks volumes right there about how good Kai is in this pose. But another really solid guy, one of the best to ever hit it, Lee Haney. Some of the best lat development and pec development of his time, of all time, really. So, And Lee was kind of like the Dorian of the 80s in a lot of ways because he was beating guys by outmassing them and with superior back development. Got a bit of a vacuum there, always an impressive sight. And looking extremely aesthetic here. This is something a lot of us could probably aspire to, you know, look like this, right? And here we got Lee Priest. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this goofy-ass grin there, but 
Uh, he surprised me too. I didn't think he'd make this list because he's a narrower guy, right? And usually narrow guys don't tend to fare well in the front lat spread pose, but the more pictures I saw of Lee, the more that theory was kind of disproved. You know, especially because he's an arm dominant guy, and again, that tends not to bode well in the front lat spread pose when your arms dominate and overshadow your lats, but, you know, look at the, talk about crazy genetics, right? He's only 21 here, it says, and look at the level of muscularity. Like, that is crazy. Because he couldn't have been training for that long or had access to, like, you know, a ton of drugs and stuff. So, obviously a genetic freak. And he's also, you know, he's noted for his arms primarily, but he had really good legs too. And I think he looks pretty solid, as you can see from all these pictures in the front last spread. So, to say that Joshua Lenarkowitz is better than Lee Priest, come on. But anyway, we got uh, Kevin Lavroni here, and I think he hits it better than either of them because he's got tremendous width. He's got more width, right? He's got the crazy V taper, the flaring lats. Look how wide they are. Like, this guy's ready to take flight here, man. <laughs> Wings like that. This is world class. And, you know, Kevin, especially back in the day when his legs were better, he didn't really have any weak body parts here. No weaknesses in this pose. Like, some guys, this pose is all about the lats, but with Kevin, you know, even his arms, his delts, his pecs look really good. Uh, we got Lionel Bayeki. I was praising him in the last video about his aestheticism and his tight waistline, and again, it, um, it's featured here. You can see it on display right here. And um, I think he looks better than a younger Rolly Winkler before Rolly really piled on the mass in the last couple of years. Because Lionel looks a little bit broader through the shoulders, his waist looks even a little bit more tapered, and his legs are more dialed in. So, not that really looks bad, but Lionel just looks better. Then we got Melvin Anthony. They call him Marvelous Melvin Anthony because he's really an incredible poser. He has very entertaining posing routines. If you haven't already seen him, I highly suggest you YouTube him and go check out some of his routines. Because, in my opinion, they put some of Kai's to shame. He's kind of a mixture of, like, say, Kai and Darren Charles with his pop and lock and stuff. And he does like the Matrix thing. It's really cool. Go check him out. Pretty aesthetic guy. Um, it really exudes a lot of personality, at least when he's on stage. I don't know what he's like as a person. But um, look at the, this is like Brian Buchanan, like with this V taper and that, those, these proportions with his arms each being almost as big as his midsection. That's crazy. So really uh, pr quite an impressive sight. Melvin Anthony. We got Milo Sarchev, though, another impressive sight. This guy really was extremely aesthetic earlier in his career. I really wish he didn't fuck around with all that synthol and stuff later on and try to play more of the mass game, because he was pretty much perfect here. Aesthetically speaking, you know, this is, um, this is like Flex Wheeler level. Really good stuff from Milo. We got Mohamed Benaziza, and I featured him in the last video, too was remarking on his uh, his thickness, you know, for a shorter, stockier guy. And, you know, the more I look at him, the more I'm like, this is kind of like Franco Colombo 2.0. You know, another short, stocky guy, very, you know, fully developed. And, you know, not at that level of, like, freaky mass that, you know, other short guys like Branch Warren would, would come, to, come to develop. But this guy was more, still kind of classical, even though he was uh, extremely massive for his, his size. Then we got another... Um, mini mass monster, if you want to call it that, and Mustafa Mohammed, another short guy with some almost tumorous lats there, and same for the thighs. He had some crazy thighs for a shorter guy, and I think he looks pretty impressive in this pose. Not in an aesthetic way, really, but just in, in terms of a bodybuilding, like overall mass and proportion way. But we got a real mass monster here, Nasser El Sambadi. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find many good pictures of him hitting the front lat spread pose because they're all like from crappy angles or bad lighting. But this one's one of the better ones. And uh, even though he's out angling Yates here, he still looks much better overall. Like, look at the difference in the arms, and even the legs look better on Nasser. The chest looks more fuller and better. Uh, it's, I can't believe that Yates somehow won this. This was the 97 Mr. Olympia, by the way. And talk about a freak. Look at this guy. He doesn't even look like a human. This is Orville Burke. He competed in the 2000s, and he looks kind of like some sort of weird alien insect or plant even. Like, it's not human looking. The the angle that his lats flare out, the way that they just kind of jut out from his torso, like, look at here. It's almost like 90 degrees. It's freaky. Um, so he's got certainly one of the most unique front lat spreads, and very impressive, too. Not in an aesthetic way, again, but just in terms of a freaky mass level, you know, like very unique front lat spread from Orville Burke. We got Paul DeMaio, and nothing really freaky about this, um, just, you know, looking solid throughout. 
we got Phil Heath, and I've knocked him before, and I'll probably continue to knock him again on his front lat spread, because it's definitely not his best pose. It's by far not his best pose, but nonetheless, I could still find pretty good pictures of him hitting this pose, like, like this one right here. This was from 2013, I believe, and same here. You know, so back in that year, he actually looked pretty good in this pose. Again, it's not one of his strongest poses, and other guys like Kai are beating him. But then again, Phil's holding his own. He still looks pretty good here. I don't really say I don't really see how you could say that this looks that Phil looks bad here. Like Kai, Kai just looks better. That's all it is. But then in, you know, then again, in 2014, Rami's just taking a shit on him, in my opinion. You know, he looks so much bigger and wider and just filling out the pose better than Phil. But uh, we have Reg Park. We, we'll, we'll go way back here. This was. Um, Arnold's idol and mentor. This is the guy who kind of inspired Arnold to even start bodybuilding. So without this guy right here, you know, we wouldn't even have, we might not have even had the oak himself. And Reg Park was really one of the first guys to be able to hit this pose really effectively, I feel. You know, by today's standards, this guy looks like he's a natural. Like, <laughs> and he might have been though, because, you know, Arnold was one of the first guys to start experimenting with steroids. And so this guy might, might have been completely natural. In which case, that just makes this even more impressive. And then we got Sean Roden. Um, one of the best guys to hit this pose today, I think, because he's got probably the tightest waistline. Although in the last couple of years, he's kind of acquired a little bit of distension. So a little bit. He's losing it a bit, but I mean, overall, look at the legs. It's very, his V taper is very reminiscent of Lee Haney's to me. Um, he's just got bigger arms and better legs. And, you know, I'm not saying he's better than Lee Haney, because Lee Haney was definitely fuller and he had a better chest um but you know sean looks really good too now this guy is actually more reminiscent of lee haney this is robbie robinson and i really feel he was quite ahead of his time because he was competing in the same era as arnold the 70s the early 80s and it looks like he could have been competing like a decade later with development like this i mean you talk about the uh the v taper the pecs the delts the arms the afro <laughs> he looks really good here he is um Crushing for Rigno and Boyer Co. And but you know we have to include this guy obviously Ronnie. No surprise to anyone because he's got one of the, one of the best, if not the best, backs of all time, and an absolute monster, just completely annihilating people, really in this pose and many others. And he had crazy legs as well. You know even his chest was you can see all sorts of striations, which is. Pretty uncommon in a front lat spread pose. Here again, you can see them. Tremendous lat development, you know, arm development. Almost everything was tremendously developed on Ronnie. And we got another mass monster in Marcus Rule. Pretty much on the same level of mass as Ronnie. Um, not as fully developed, but then again, look at this. He's basically fusing together a front lat spread pose and a most muscular. I've never seen anything like this. You know, it's, it's almost like a hands-on hip most muscular, but look where his hands are positioned. This is still a front lat spread. You can see like a defined split through both pecs. It's absolutely ridiculous. I wish I could find, um, you know, more videos of, or, or more pictures of this with be better quality, but this was the only one I could find of him hitting it effectively like this. And here he is destroying uh, Gustavo Bedell. And, you know, Marcus was one of the freakiest guys uh, ever, you know, with his, with his mass and the delts, the pecs, the biceps. And here he is annihilating Paul Delette. Now, Delette on paper should have made this list easily because he's got a crazy physique and tremendous mass. Really good shape, too. But like I mentioned before, he just can pose for shit. So you can see Marcus Rule taking advantage of that here in this comparison. And let's take it back to the old school days. We got Sergio Oliva, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Serge Nubre, and Frank Zane. Talk about a Hall of Fame lineup. Now, the reason I'm showing this photo is because of Sir Sergio Oliva, the guy on the left. Arnold looks really good in this particular pose, in this picture, but this is probably the best one I've been able to see of Arnold hitting the front lat spread, because most of the time, he just doesn't look that good, and quite frankly, not good enough to make my list. Because I feel like he didn't really hit the pose effectively. He usually had his hands placed a little higher than they appear here, so his, his wide waist was kind of... He wasn't hiding it properly, and the angle of his arms was too acute. It just didn't flow very well with his physique. I just don't like the way he hit it. I think he could have done it, you know, more effectively. But nonetheless, um, yeah, Sergio looks really good. 
And you talk about a genetic freak. I mean, this guy was Arnold's predecessor. So he was competing with Arnold, but also before Arnold. And, you know, to have this level of development through the lats, the pecs, the delts, he had some of the best triceps ever, too, and the legs were really solid for his day. From what I've read, he didn't even have a proper diet. He wasn't really, uh, he obviously didn't have, you know, good drugs at his disposal. Like, if he, if he was competing in the 90s and the 2000s, I think we would have had another Ronnie Coleman on our hands. That's just how genetically, you know, gifted this guy was. But you talk about uh, genetic gifts, and here's another guy who has that in spades, Sean Ray. Because the guy really doesn't have a weak body part or a weak pose. I've mentioned this before in other videos. One of the most complete uh, total package bodybuilders ever. And yeah, I mean, no surprise to me that he made this list either. You know, because he looks solid in every pose. We got Silvio Samuel. Another kind of unheralded guy. Um, flew in under the radar a little bit in you know the 2000s. Don't really hear his name brought up too much, but I feel like he looks pretty good in this post. Not one of the best to hit it, but good enough to make this list, I think, because he's got a really good X frame, as you can see right here. And looks pretty solid for a shorter guy in the lat spread. We got this guy, Tony Pearson. They called him the Michael Jackson of bodybuilding, and you can kind of see why in the facial similarities before MJ got all that plastic surgery and everything, right? But um, never even really heard of this guy, but apparently he was featured in Arnold's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. I just don't really remember because I read that book like well over a decade ago. Um, but yeah, crazy uh, V taper and good vacuum too. Very like Lee Haney, Lee Haney reminiscent to me. And he looks like he's about to take flight here. You talk about wings, right? This guy was competing, I think, in the 80s. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't really know much about the guy, Tony Pearson. Troy Alves, another kind of unheralded guy from the 2000s that you don't hear too much talk about these days, but holy cow, and the half natty lighting man, that's crazy. He's got like two splits in his pecs. I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought there was only supposed to be one. Then again, everyone looks better in like natural lighting as opposed to when they're on stage, right? But Troy is just very well structurally suited for this pose because he's got, you know, broad shoulders and a narrow waist, and he's got pretty good aesthetics and complete development, so... We got Dennis Wolf, and I was kind of cutting him up in the last video about his asymmetrical arms, his high lat insertions, his lack of a left calf, but in this particular pose, those things don't hurt him as much. You don't really notice the arms as much. He's got his high lat insertions are kind of um, blocked a little bit by where he places his hands, and he still has a left calf here. This was 2007, so before whatever injuries afflicted that. And he's got really good delts, does Dennis, so he's going to look good in this pose. Here he is next to Phil and Kai. Uh, doing a good job holding his own. This was in 2013, and this is the year that I said that Phil probably looked the best in the front lat spread pose. Uh, Kai's probably still winning this, but this is this is not a comparison video, right? So, um, you know, needless to say, none of these guys takes the number one spot, uh, nor does Andre Munzer, nor even does Ronnie, because we've already seen him. So obviously, we got the shadow Dorian Yates taking that number one slot because... You know, in my opinion, he's just the best to ever hit this pose. They did a poll. I saw a, a poll on bodybuilding.com forums where they asked this question, who hits this pose the best? And they had like a dozen different bodybuilders to choose from. Dorian was there, Lee Haney, Ronnie. And Dorian won by a landslide. And you can really see why. I mean, he was just so consistently good in this pose. Whereas with Ronnie, some years he didn't really look that great in this, in this uh, front lat spread pose. He looked a little awkward. You'll see that later. But Dorian always looks solid. He looked like he was born to hit this pose. You know, I said before that um, Phil Heath, you know, looks like he's he's just totally locked in when he hits that back double bicep pose, like he can hold it all day. And Dorian looks like he could hold this pose all day. You know, he just looks so comfortable and natural in it. And obviously with one of the best backs ever, that's always going to be to his advantage. You know, here's what I'm talking about. It just looks like it's not even a struggle for him. It looks like this is his natural position, you know. And we can see it here. This makes it clear as day for me, like, why Dorian wins this pose and why Ronnie would probably take second if I was to order it, but not quite as good because Ronnie looks a little more awkward here. It looks like he's struggling a bit, whereas Dorian looks completely confident and natural, very comfortable, and I just think he looks better overall. So that's my number one pick. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you agree. Let me know if I forgot about anybody. I'm sure I did. There's probably guys that I never even heard of that I didn't put on this list. And, um, yeah. Next time, we're going to be talking about the best side chest pose of all time. But until then, thanks for watching, and 
I'm signing off. This has been the Tominator. I'll be back.